Here's a, another question that was sent to me. The individual was going to put some type of a car lift system in his garage and wanted to know if he could uh, vault the ceiling somehow or raise it by um, adding a scissor truss. And I think that's what uh, he was thinking about doing. Now, the scissor truss will be difficult to get into a building that's already uh, has sheathing on it. And really, there's only two ways you're going to be able to do it. Take the sheathing off in, in a certain area or remove a section of the wall to where you can get the truss in there. So it is possible, but the amount of uh, damage required to the building might uh, be extensive. So here's an idea that I thought of. I think you could simply put some rafters in there and uh, remember conventional rafters with rafter ties and collar ties can replace roof trusses you would just need to know what size lumber to use and i can't really provide you with that because these videos are seen all over the world if you just have a regular 4 and 12 5 and 12 pitch roof and you're not dealing with a snow load then a 2x8 might work just fine. And the reason why I'm saying that is because I've seen plenty of buildings like this with 2x6. So in the video I have here, I'm going to use 2x8. So instead of going on top of the wall, the rafters will actually sit on a ledger. You'll see that in a second. So with these cuts, the cuts going up and down, the plum cuts, I think you'll be able to slide the rafters up into position without any problems. Here's a view of a 2x4 that I put underneath the ridge and uh, this can be continuous or blocks you can use but the main thing would be to have some type of a support underneath the roof rafters and if you are going to use a ridge you might need to notch around the webbing for the trusses. And again, blocks would probably be fine also. Just make sure you have something in this area here. And this can be toenailed or end nailed. And here's some stagger nailing, 16 Ds, 16 inches on center. And I believe I have other videos on that. But this would basically be nails at uh, in an upper section, about an inch and a quarter away from the end or the edge. 16 inches apart and then you would come in the center drop it down to the other side so we'd basically have a eight inches eight inches eight inches but it would give us a 16 inch staggered nailing so you're not going to want to go 16 inches from here to the nail and then 16 inches that would be a 32 inch on center staggered nailing and if you need more information feel free to put a or put a comment in the video comment area and I'll see if I can find the video. But it's always nice if you can actually look for it first yourself. Try to find the videos before contacting me. And uh, and again, I understand some people difficult to find it. I do have a video on how to use the website. I'll put a link in it uh, here so that you can do it if you need more information about how to find stuff on the website. So here are some bolts, simply bolting instead of nailing the rafters together. Uh, maybe a 5 16 or a 3 8 inch bolt, something like that. I wouldn't uh, put too big of a bolt there, take away from the strength of the lumber. And of course, here's our ledger. And it's, uh, I kind of have staggered lag screws or using staggered leg screws here. And uh, maybe a 3 8 inch or 5 16 lag screw here. Again, remember, I'm not an engineer. I'm just providing you with ideas that might work. And, of course, you can see how it is supporting the rafter here. An inch and a half is usually the minimum that a rafter uh, needs to sit on top of a wall. Um, so I'd imagine it could sit on top of a ledger, no problem like this. And since it's attached to the roof truss, I don't think you'll have problems with any movement because the roof truss is going to be fastened to the wall and to uh, and the truss itself will create its own ridge. But uh, you're looking for a little more support. You can always put uh, use some hardware like this and uh, maybe even something like this if you're looking for a, another connection there. 
And of course you can always uh, toenail it into the framing plate and the ledger also. Okay, next thing would be would be to cut the trusses so that you could uh, vault the ceiling. But once you do this, I want to point out, um, you're usually going to need rafter ties 48 inches on center. So if you have uh, two foot on center trusses like we have here, you're going to need a rafter tie every four foot. So here's one of the, this truss would still have its uh, rafter tie connection but we wouldn't have one here. So, and I am gonna put a link here explaining a little more information about rafter ties so that you can um, see it. And for those of you who already have a pretty good idea what a rafter tie does, you won't need to watch the video, but uh, I don't need to put a lot of information in here that I have already made. So here would be the vaulted ceiling. And of course you wouldn't have any collar ties in here to create the vaulted ceiling. So you might need to strap the top of it. And another view of it there. Oh, here I was showing where the any of the bracing might need to be removed in this area. A view of it from the bottom. And again, we can see the brace here on the top of the top of the bottom cord. Another view of the nailing and the cut truss. And that is it for the video. I wouldn't recommend doing something like this. You cut out uh, three or four of them, that might be okay. You might not have a problem with it. But uh, any more than that, um, you could be in for a problem. Uh, so especially if you haven't had any engineering on it. And then again, I hate to say this, you know, engineers, some of the stuff, if you don't know enough about building, then an engineer might benefit you a lot. If you understand a lot, you've seen a building built before a certain way or some type of modifications done to a building like this, then um, you might not need an engineer, especially if the building has had engineering. One of the biggest problems I find out is a do-it-yourselfer do it goes in and they look at something and then they go, oh, that building's uh, been standing up for a while. I'm going to do it myself. And Or they see a picture of something done in California, but this isn't going to work in Michigan. So a uh, big problem, you know. So that's why I kind of stress in these videos, an engineer or someone who knows what they're doing, a little more information is going to benefit you. Uh, 